How well do you know the law? Do you know your rights? Do you know your wrongs? Here's a program that will keep you in the know of the law. Tune in to Styles FM this and every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 5.15 p.m. with your host, DG Angel, and get legal-minded. Remember, ignorance is no excuse of the law. The law. So be in the know of the law. The law. The law. In the know of the law is sponsored by Native Audio and Equipment Rental Services. Good evening. This is your host, Delrose Green, Sergeant of Police. My friends call me DG Angel. And welcome to the program, In the Know of the Law. This program is designed to educate persons on the sections and legislations of the law. Stay tuned, don't touch your dial, because at the end, you shall know the law. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank all the listeners who have tuned into this very informative program in the know of the law. And I just want to tell you, um, all persons who have been giving me their positive feedback, I want to say thanks. This afternoon, we have been discussing um, from the last program the um, topic of rape. And just a recap, when we did rape, we did marital rape. But this evening, we're going to go a little wider to expound on the topic of rape itself and we choose to continue this program as we realize that a lot of persons are being affected by this um, crime that persons have you know done to you know individuals that it's it's unbearable so to speak and what is rape on the section 3 of the sexual offenses act of 2009 it says a man commits the offense of rape if he has sexual intercourse with a woman without the woman's consent, knowing that the woman does not consent to sexual intercourse or recklessly not caring whether the woman consents or not. For the purposes of subsection one, consent shall not be treated as existence with the apparent agreement to sexual intercourse is extorted by physical assault or threats or fear of physical assault to the complainant or to a third person. Obtained by false and fraudulent presentation as to the nature of the act or the identity of the offender. A man who has sexual intercourse with a woman without her consent, knowing that she does not consent, commit the offense of rape. Now, the act is very wide and I would encourage persons um, who have access to the internet and um, a lot of other, the Stay Alert app that the Minister of National Security have spoken about and they have launched it. I would encourage persons to log on to it so they can be made abreast of the law as it relates to many sections of the law. But we're going to speak here this afternoon about rape and the fact that if a, a rape is committed on you, the first thing persons tend to feel and rightfully so, is embarrassment, resentment, withdrawal, and a lot of other emotions that the person has a right to feel. A person's body has been violated, and as such, sometimes it takes the rest of your life. Some persons never get over it. There is no particular time for anyone to actually, there's no time period for an individual to get over rape. Some persons, you know, live for the rest of their life not being able to trust a brother, a father, a uncle, any male counterpart, a co-worker. Some persons, you know, will never ever get the opportunity of living a normal life after being raped. And so we intend to expound on it. Of course, in 2009, the Sexual Offenses Act was changed. Before that though, I want to tell persons that although the act was changed, take for instance sake, um, before 2008, we did not have sexual intercourse with a child under the age of 16, all right? So we had what we call carnal abuse. Now that does not mean that if before 2009, you were molested 
whether by virtue of rape or the fact that you were molested under the age of 16, which they had called at that time carnal abuse, do not think that because the law changed in 2009 and it is now called a different name that you do not have your right. A lot of persons feel that certain amount of years have passed and as such, because of that, you no longer have the right to report a matter. We have some landmark cases that persons after 30 something years got convictions for persons who molested them when they were children. So therefore, I am saying that it does not have a time limit that if you felt that in 2001, an uncle, a nephew, a brother, a father, a stepfather touched you or molested you and you know, growing up, you can't get over it. It's not too late to speak to someone in authority about it. All right. So we, we're talking about the topic of rape now. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the Jamaica Constabulary Force found it necessary to make a unit called a Sissoka unit um, to assist persons who are dealing with the offense of rape. Why? Because we find that although all police officers are trained to deal with emotional um, problems, physical problems, but then in any sector you have specialists, all right? So if you have a baby and the baby is sick, you're going to find that you go to a pediatrician. So it's the same way in the Jamaica Constabulary Force. And we are never saying that all police officers are not capable to deal with the offense of rape. We'll never say that. But therefore, we specially train these individuals to deal with these persons emotionally, mentally, physically, and otherwise, because rape is a trauma. You can cut somebody on the hand and they get over it after a while, forbid. A man, although domestic violence is another thing we're going to capture, but sometimes a man eats a woman, and because, I don't know, some women accept the eating and whatever, she gets over it. As it relates to rape, I don't think there's a timeline on it, and I think a lot of persons deal with the matter, you know, too casual, because I can tell you that I've spoken to persons who have been so violated, and, are, and, and it, it takes a lifetime for them to get over it. Okay. Now, ladies, if for any reason you're violated, report it immediately to the police. And if you do not feel comfortable to go straight to the police, find a trusted family member. And, and, and we're now talking all about children, and we're talking about boys. I'm not narrowing down this thing to just adult females. I'm saying whatever age you are, whatever sex you are, if you feel that you're touched, molested, um, have somebody has sexual intercourse with you without your permission, whether your mother sent you to stay with an auntie and the auntie husband touch you, or whether you, your mother left you with your stepfather and he touch you, whatever you feel that somebody has done to you that you're not comfortable with. If you're, a, if you're a child at school, report it to a teacher that you feel comfortable to speak with. If you have another person in a community that you think that you feel comfortable to talk to, then talk to that person. Another sector that I want to tell persons about, on, in my words, now, and I'm going to say to you that persons can be arrested and charged for knowing about something and covering up. Let me give you a quick scenario. So you have a stepfather, and he molested you, and you told your mother, and because your mother I him have a look about all the other siblings, the man pay the rent and light bill and water it, your mother prefer to give the, the, the stepfather, the benefit of the doubt. Now, can I tell you that if it is borne out that this mother knew that you were molested and did nothing about it, then she also have committed an offense. If a neighbor know that you were raped and decides, hey, well, my son did the rape, so I'll give her money if you cover it up, that person also have committed an offense. The law has been set in place to protect you as an individual. The, the emotional part of it, though, is sometimes a little tedious because persons will say, and we're not going to be naive, persons say that they'll go to the police station and they do not feel comfortable because of how they are communicated with. Now, you know, my way of saying one of the things is that they say, the wheat and tears shall mix. 
Some persons have personalities that clash with others. So you might go in the guard room and you see somebody with a smiley face and you feel receptive to that person. You might see an angel pass you with her face makeup and say, you know, so a police woman, they look rough, me not talk to her. So when you go to the police station, get in your comfort zone. And honestly, whosoever you see there, because guess what? We should be receptive to everyone. But because we are human beings, you know, sometimes our face, we don't mean anything, but you might say, but I'm, the person there, I'm in a really quick way, or click. What I'm trying to say to you, though, do not leave out of that station not feeling as if you find someone that you're comfortable to speak with. Now, when you find um, a tennis soccer unit, somebody's going to sit and speak to you at length about what happened in your own timing. They're not going to tell you it's not like you're, you're rushed to speak, and I can tell you because I know the officers at Sissoka are properly trained. So what I'm saying to you, and Jason, good evening. Welcome, everyone. What I'm saying is that the persons that are at the Sissoka unit are specially trained. And then baby this. You know, I was saying to Detective Sergeant Carleen McKen that I think Sissoka persons should get therapy from time to time because they get so involved in the matters that they have this passion for, for the, the, the matters that come before them that you're actually the, the, the person says so doesn't after your case even ends in court they do not end it there they follow up you have become friends of the police and as such then you know it's an easier process for you to go through this Speaking from a woman's point of view and from an adult's point of view, I know it's very hard to sit before someone and explain to them that this is what has happened to me. And for us as police officers to understand that you sometimes has to be, you know, you really have to get in depth in what happened. Questions might be asked of you that you're a little uncomfortable to answer, but it's to help us to be able to put your statements together properly and to be able to make certain that you have a good case going before the court. One of the other things I want to say to you, if you have been so molested, whether you're a child, whether you're a female, ad, um, adult female, or if you're even a man or a boy child, you know, we had a discussion the other night and we were saying that men cannot be raped. And I stand by that. A man can't be raped, but a man can be molested. And a man can, can be violated. And there's an offense for it. So therefore, do not think that we're saying it's just that the word rape cannot be associated with a man. But I'll discuss that at another time. When the matter goes before the court, I, and even, let me go before I reach that. If there's an identification parade, the force is now so equipped that when you go on the ID parade, if you said that when the man you know, raped you, then he was wearing a blue tam. What they've done is to put on a blue tam, a tam on everybody that is in the parade. You, now, we, we, we are so equipped now that you don't have to stare on the person. The person not seeing you, you it's called a one-way mirror, so you actually see them, and they don't have to see you. So uh, the Sissoka unit and the Jamaica Constable Force have put things in place to make things so much easier for you after being so traumatized that you can go and actually, you know, point out this person that you can have a case. When you go to court, there's a thing called an in-camera. And I'm moving along quickly because of the, 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 the clock on the wall is moving along. So pardon me. When you go to court... Do not think, and, and I'm, it's important that I say this to persons, because persons think that, okay, boy, I'm going to get raped, or they molest me, I'm going to go to court, the whole of who live up, live up in my country, I'm going to go to court. Not so. It is called a in-camera matter. So let me just quickly say the persons that are allowed to be in court. One, the judge. Two, the police officers. And there are some judges that if you have too much male officers in the court at the time, they will say to the officer in charge of court, you know, could you just ask some of your officers to step outside? Because we want the victim to feel comfortable. The child, the, we have the victim support unit person. If the accused person has a lawyer, and they should have a lawyer, if they're not, if they don't have one, then one is assigned to them, the lawyer will be in there. But I can assure you, it's not a courtroom packed with people. It's just it's a small set of persons that are there, an unpicked person who have to be there, in addition to the clerk of court. So when you come, you get to speak in a private way about what has happened. 
Ladies and gentlemen, let me just say that we ought to be more sensitive to these persons who have been molested. There are so many persons in our society. You'll be frightened to know, since I started this program, about persons who have confided in me. It is frightening because I'm a police officer and I never know that there are persons around us who have been molested, not one or not two, up to three times and they live amongst us and sometimes we see them feel so miserable and say boy she pretty and she does miserable and these persons have a lot going through what we need to do is to get more sensitive towards persons feelings not everybody go and tell everybody a business because guess what everybody have a best friend so i might you know you i might you know get raped and i tell cassidy and before me left Cassie, they pinch Chungi and tell Chungi. And before me left Chungi, pinch somebody else. So therefore, it's never, it's never a one, two, three on who you really tell. It's you really have to get in your gut feeling. But for God's sake, do not keep it to yourself. Because even as a, the matter proceeds to trial, or rather in the circuit court, then we have counselors that are going to speak to you, professional persons. We're going to speak to you and carry you through this ordeal that you have been through. And step by step, because they're trained how to deal with it, step by step. You might never ever get over it, but at least you'll be able to be more comfortable with yourself. And, and as so doing, you know, let me just say to you that a young lady said to me that she don't like to be called pretty. And I said, why? Because she said, when the persons violated her, they said to her, look how you're pretty, and you hide yourself from we. What a God they had. So this young lady, no longer, although she's beautiful, cannot be told that she's beautiful because something as simple as that drives her nuts. And I can tell you that these persons who have been violated, they are not overreacting. They are emotionally destroyed. And as such, we have to. And, and ladies and gentlemen, why am I saying this? I want us to get aware that we live in a really demonic world. When we have a country that men start to rape babies, men start to rape... You, you remember when we lick a bit and live all about and, and we go shop and them see we up on the road and them mass do a walk with you go up a shortcut because you know want nothing do we and what, what do we? Mr. Roy Clark, cow might have buck we or one dog might have run with them because nobody troubled us. Those days are long gone. Might never come back because the Bible is fulfilling. So what we have to do is to make certain that the next person we see acting in a certain way you ever talk to somebody yet and you're trying to be nice to them? And, and, and what it does is that they just back after you. You know, somebody said that it troubles their self-esteem. When a person is raped or violated, they no longer feel bubbly. They no longer feel nice. They, all of a sudden, it doesn't matter what persons... A young lady said she wear a hoodie. She, she don't stop wear a hoodie. Why? Because she feel like she want to hide from the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to ask you, whoever is hearing my voice, wherever you are hearing my voice, let us be more sensitive towards persons because we just never know what the other person that we meet is going through. Now, let me just quickly say in wrapping up, if you're out there and you have been ever molested, if you have not yet reported it to the police, do it now. If you have reported it to the police and you have not got what you think is a satisfaction, go back. Let it be known that I say that there's a unit called the Sissoka Unit. We have trained and professional persons who will take your matter, who will deal with it, who will go in depth in it. And I can tell you, for the persons that I have known so far in this unit, they are so passionate that they will never stop until they get a conviction, if it is so possible. And why a lot of these persons, if they should get away, get away? Because it is still in the hands of the court that it is a, a, a jury trial. And at the next time, we'll discuss that. But because a jury trial and the persons who try the matters are decide the fate of persons, sometimes are from the same parishes in here, we know. And of course, we try the case on the road already. And we said, well, we're not saying a boy Pitney, no woman, boy Pitney got prison. And, and she didn't want a man long time. We need to stop it. Because if it was our daughter, our niece, our sister, we would not feel that way. And even if she didn't want, quote unquote, man long time, make sure you look a man. A man is supposed to put on himself on a young lady or a young boy, so to speak. All right? So I just want to implore upon somebody today that is hurting out there, that I've been so molested, that you have somewhere that you can go to. Speak.
speak to persons about it that are so trained. The police officers, the Sissoka unit. And if you go to a station, you don't wear the Sissoka unit is, ask them. Say, where are you? And you come from, you can't find the Sissoka unit. Yes, they might assume that, you know, that is why you're going, but it could be for a niece. It could be for an uncle. And it need to stop. Ladies and gentlemen, let us be. And because then, guess what? I'm going to challenge you today. I am going to challenge you, everybody over this world that is hearing my voice. The next person you see in your mind, pretend that that person was molested and see how loving and warm we get towards each other. Just because we never know, and probably that's the safest way to be. It must stop. Ladies and gentlemen, as I say, when we're having fun, time flies. So I'm at the end of another program. I can't leave here though without saying thanks to everyone who has tuned in. And for all the persons on Facebook Live, I see you all and I want to tell you thanks and I want you to spread the word with me. For everyone that is listening from St. Thomas, St. Anne, Portland, St. Mary, and parts of St. Catherine, England, Canada, and America, anybody that is hearing me today, I just want to say big up. You know, and I want to tell you to continue to listen to In the Know of the Law. Of course, we're going to be inviting persons that are interested in sharing as a part of the law, whatever sector you're in, whether the parish council, whether NIS, whether the transport authority, wherever, that we, we are going to get police officers from traffic department, from the, the pre and larceny act. We wanted to flesh out all of this. But we think it was important to start with sexual offenses against females. And of course, next month is the domestic violence month. So we're going to go there. So little by little, in our small, humble way, we're going to be imparting information on how persons can, after being violated, still feel comfortable to mix and mingle in society. All right? Ladies and gentlemen, as I say, we are at the end of another show. And I want to say thanks to our kind sponsors, Native Audio and Equipment Rental Services. I want to thank the Jamaica Constabular Force, DSP Rex Swearing, uh, my superintendent of police who have supported this program. For all the police officers and the citizens who meet me to say a very good show, I just want to tell you thanks. There was a gentleman who called in the other night and said that he's enjoying the program from the USA. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. All right. Do remember to email me at know the law, know the law at stylesfm.com. All right. At, and it, regarding questions about the laws of Jamaica or to be a part of the program, if you are at a department and is abreast of the law, we need to hear from you that you can also be a part of this very interesting program. I want to thank Styles FM and my engineer Cassidy. And of course, the Fresh Prince, of course, is here with me. And as always, my son and Tonto partner. Me can I say that? Antoine, Tony Pierce. Love you. All right. That's it for today's episode of In the Know of the Law. Until next time, this is your host, DG Angel, saying, you now know the law. God bless you and walk good. Jason, love you.